my name is John Kissel. I'm a gastroenterologist uh, specializing in the care of patients with inflammatory bowel disease. I've been given an opportunity to talk to you today about a recent study that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association looking at the risk of cancer with exposure to certain types of medications that we use to treat inflammatory bowel disease. Most specifically, medications such as um, infliximab or Remicade, adalimumab or Humira, or sertilizumab uh, pegol, also known as Simsia, uh, have been shown to be very effective for the treatment of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Studies on the cancer risk of these drugs have been of interest to clinicians and patients because these drugs alter the immune system and theoretically could alter our ability to fight certain types of cancer, which is one of the jobs of the immune system. These drugs have also been used extensively in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis and other connective tissue diseases and studies of patients exposed to those drugs for those conditions have been somewhat conflicting with regards to their uh, interpretation of the risk of, uh, of cancer while exposed to those drugs. Within the inflammatory bowel disease literature, our knowledge uh, has been hampered by studies of relatively small sample size, such as say five, 6,000 patients, with relatively short duration of follow-up. To try to address this question, Dr. Anderson and colleagues uh, examined uh, patients participating in the Danish nationwide cohort. This was a collection of patients uh, from the country of Denmark, a uh, study between 1999 and 2010 when they would have been exposed to one of these drugs or anti-TNF drugs. The researchers uh, found more than uh, 56,000 patients who had been exposed uh, to those drugs uh, during the study period and then followed them forward for uh, more than nine years. And what they found is that after adjusting for other cancer risk factors such as age, smoking, uh, and exposure to other medications, specifically uh, azathioprine or Imuran, that the risk of cancer was not significantly increased for patients exposed to the anti-TNF drugs. I think this mirrors recent findings that we've uh, also described, other studies that we've commented on in this forum. Uh, most recently, a study that was published in Gastroenterology uh, examining the lack of association with adalimumab or Humira alone and cancer risk, and that there was a sign of increased cancer risk in patients exposed to azathioprine in combination with adalimumab. The study by Anderson and colleagues did not find any evidence of a dose response to anti-TNF drugs, meaning that the cancer risk did not go up with a greater number of TNF drugs that have been used or a greater number of TNF doses. Also, these authors did not find a statistically significant increase in the risk of specific types of cancer that we've long been concerned about, specifically lymphoma, uh, skin cancer, and colorectal cancer. This study does have some important limitations. Even with 56,000 patients, uh, the study sample size was small enough that unless the risk of cancer had increased by more than a third, it may not have been detected in this particular study. The duration of follow-up was nine years or more, which is very good, but the limitation again is that the results really couldn't be extended beyond this study period, and therefore I think this will continue to be an area of active interest for clinicians and patients alike. In conclusion, in a large observational study with long-term follow-up, it did not appear that anti-TNF drugs such as infliximab, adalimumab, or sertilizumab, Remicade, Humira, and Simsia respectively, significantly increase the risk of cancer. Uh, Simsia is also not, F is not approved for use in European patients and therefore would not be uh, as specifically applicable as we might hope. I think that uh, patients should be aware that uh, azathioprine or Imuran could modestly increase the risk of cancer and that they should discuss the use of this medicine in combination with anti-TNF drugs with their physician. It is becoming increasingly standard practice to use this combination of medicines as the body of evidence suggests that the benefits to patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are significantly greater than the risks in using these combinations. Thank you very much for your time.